If you've ever been to Thailand before, I'm sure you've noticed Thai amulets, probably first when you got in a taxi from the airport to your hotel. Would have been hanging over the rear view mirror. And after you've been here for a while, you've probably noticed Thai men mainly displaying these amulets on chains around their neck, often, often great numbers of amulets and often worn outside the t-shirt on display. Thai Buddhist amulets are actually consecrated or blessed by the materials that are used, sometimes the earth or dirt around the, the, the monk uh, or around the temple. And amulets made by the most venerable monks of the past can fetch up to millions of baht. This really is a hugely collectible market here, not just for the perceived magical qualities in the amulets, but also the rareness as well. For example, soldiers and gangsters get certain ones to protect them against knives and, and guns. Uh, people with dangerous jobs get them for protection. People get them for good luck, for wealth, for health, for safety, for luck, for love. It's a common occurrence as well to see Thai men or groups of Thai men crowded around a stall selling amulets or crowded around a trader in a market or by the side of the street or wherever. And they all pull out a little special amulet magnifying glass and they're all hoping to notice something that someone else hasn't noticed. Where's it from? Who was it made by? what materials are used and what special powers does it have so as you as you might imagine that fakes and mass-produced stuff are obviously rife whenever there's money to be made there are going to be lots of decoy and copy products but let's go and have a look at the amulet market today i'm no expert i'm not there to see if they're mass-produced or rare i just want to give you a, a look into the rich tapestry of life which is a local Thai market. So look, briefly speaking, it's a leftover of animism, as I've talked about before, which is rife in Thailand, Laos, Burma, and the surrounding countries, which is a deep belief in the spiritual and um, ghosts and all that sort of thing, different spirits, different powers. Um, it's a leftover also of Hinduism and Jainism. But uh, anyway, I'll talk about that a little more and I'll show you a little bit more when we, when we get in the market. With Thai Buddhism, it's all connected with animism. You look at the, I talked about the perceived magical and spiritual powers of the amulets and the, the same things can be said for um, the special tattoos. I'll drop a picture or a brief description of what, uh, uh, description of what they are. And they're a kind of, again, magical tattoos with different powers. Some, some will stop knives and guns, some will give you luck, some will channel your energies in business and that kind of thing. Anyway, let's go for a walk along the river, past the palace, etc into the amulet market and just see what the vibe's like. Join me. The Temple of Dawn there, what a run, on the other side of the river. Anyway, we're not going that way. That's about as close as we're going to get to, to Wat Po today. Whoop, whoop. Bangkok where you see police all the time they're always driving around this bit with the lights flashing it's it's the royal district so you can't you can't blame them well there's Wat Po there and this this is the Grand Palace it's been closed for rather a long time at the moment but I haven't been there for a long time in fact the last time I went I'm gonna say conservatively speaking there were about 3,000 Chinese tourists all with the same hats on. Good morning. Just having a quick stroll down the riverbank today, past the Grand Palace there. And I'm on the way to the amulet market, the Buddhist amulet market, where amulets there will protect you against all sorts of things, knives and guns and maybe bring you good luck. But uh, anyway, we're gonna go and have a look there. Look, as you can see, it's the river that side. And Not open, but I'm sure it will be soon. <laughs> Join me. Naval Civil Affairs Department. They really do have the best spots on the waterways, not just on the Chow Phraya and Bangkok, but the whole of the Eastern Seaboard. They own the best islands, probably have the best beaches as well. But yeah, this road here is normally lined, absolutely lined with tuk tuks and taxis and that kind of thing, trying to trying to get their business from obviously from tourists and unfortunately there aren't really any tourists about at the moment which from a purely selfish point of view 
is fantastic for me. Hello. I didn't expect you. I would have brought some nuts if I'd known, lads. And here comes another hungry one, look. Hello, squirrel nutkins. How you doing? You all right? That's not food, mate. Little nature break here by the, by the Grand Palace in Bangkok, in the country of Thailand. That's the Royal Barge Pier. It's been a, a pier for the Royal Barge for, oh, I don't know, 200, 250 years, something like that. I should add, if you're, I should add, if you're nervous at all about the police, the old bill, the army, the navy, anyone in uniform like that, then this whole area is probably not the place for you. If you're a little bit paranoid because there are flashing lights and police in uniform everywhere. It's okay for someone like me, an honest, law-abiding citizen. You know what, I know I'm old. I, the last five or six times I've given money to, I'm not gonna use the word beggar, someone desperate from the, from the current situation. For the first time, they're all calling me Kunpa. Thank you, Kakuna Kakunpa. Which means thank you, Father. <sighs> Even with a mask on, I look very old now, 48, but at least I'm not getting called Kunlungka. At least I'm not getting called Lung yet, which means uncle, but what it really means is old uncle, like an old Uncle Albert. I'm nearly there, but not yet. Pong shells, the ceremonies and stuff. What that geezer liked, he said very good. Other geezer walked past and he went, yeah. I'll see you down here. A lot of battery, and this place doesn't open properly for a couple of hours. Look. <laughs> you get all walks of life in here from soldiers to gangsters, all seeking their own kind of protection. No evil. Thank you. 
ไม่ได้เหรอไม่ได้ทำไมไม่ได้เนาะก็ไม่ให้ถ่ายแล้วเหรอโยนมาสิเก็บอาตายหลังนะเดี๋ยวจงให้เดี๋ยวเก็บอาตายหลังนะThat like lady tried to tell me that um, a foreigner shouldn't be walking through here looking at amulets. Never mind buying them. Um, those that know me can imagine what I said to her. I'm still filming, aren't I? So anyway. Point that at me for a while because people people seem to don't be so don't seem to like a foreigner filming their stuff. So I don't know what I can do. I film me, look me. I talk, man. Made out, huh? So there you go. He doesn't like a foreigner filming in the market. Clearly, I'm not disrespecting anyone. It's not for me to judge, but it's like the signs that you see on the way from the airport. This 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 attitude here kind of explains it a little bit. You see the massive um, signs telling foreigners not to buy any Buddhist amulets, telling foreigners not to wear any Buddhist amulets or have any tattoos, etc. I agree with the tattoos, etc. But you know what? A lot of people have lived here a long time that consider themselves Buddhist or certainly in, um, have a, a, a affinity with Buddhism and choose to wear the amulets out of respect. Uh, Buddhism isn't Thai. Yeah, it's a world religion. So, if you do want to show respect and buy an amulet and wear it for the right reasons, if you're Buddhist or you respect, you should do that. However, if you want to get a tattoo of Buddha, no, they have their own type of Buddhist tattoos, but not one of Buddha itself. And you shouldn't really be buying statues to put in the garden or in your house either. Apart from that, I'm trying to. I'm trying to be nice here after walking through there, but um, anyway. Heaven forbid I should show people the beautiful little quirks of Thai culture, eh? And we'll come out the other side. There are there's a few more kilometers of laneways and alleyways there, Kotona Cup. Anyway, that's been the one of the Thai. Been one of the Thai amulet markets. Um, for some reason, some people like the filming and encourage it, and some people say very good, very good, and other people say may die, which means you cannot. So I say, why can I not? And she says, I don't know, you just can't. So anyway, I'm happy just to walk about like that. And film, but I live in a different cult, uh, country, and I much must respect the country that I'm in. That guy just looked at me, that the old guy, and he looked at me, put his thumb up, and nodded, as if to say, "Very good." I guess some people are just a little bit precious um, as regards their religion, but I have nothing, nothing but respect for the Buddhist religion. I wear amulets. Um, I'm not even going to bang on about it. My wife's Buddhist, my whole family here are Buddhist. I can walk around an amulet market if I want to, let me assure you. I have a good mind to walk around that amulet market every day now. Anyone just being childish. If you did like that short video of the amulet market, then 
please do click like click subscribe if you haven't already and please leave a comment below am i being a dick am i being an idiot for <coughs> for not respecting thai culture or am i just trying to show you a slice of life of this beautiful beautiful country and culture i think the latter if you disagree comment below